As fun as it is to laugh at the more absurd aspects of parenting, it's very clear that both Kira and Danny are doing everything they can to raise happy, healthy, peanut-free children. <laughs> <laughs> which brings us to this portion of the evening. This is a segment we call Save the Starfish, which is especially appropriate for our next guest because she uses the starfish story on her own website to make the point that we all have the power to do something. Mm -hmm. To recap the story, there was a young girl who was walking down the beach when she noticed that hundreds of starfish had washed upon the shore. So one by one, she picked them up and started throwing them back in. And then a man comes up to her and says, what are you doing? There's too many. You can't possibly make a difference. Why even bother? And the little girl picks up another starfish, throws it back in, and says, well, it made a difference to that one. What we want to emphasize with this story is that the little girl didn't look at the starfish and say, gee, if only I had a degree in marine biology, I could study the tidal patterns to discover what causes to happen and to prevent it from happening in the future. Maybe she should get that degree, and maybe she will, but at this moment, she's taking whatever action she can. She doesn't say, if only I could build a device that would allow me to scoop up all the starfish at once. Well, maybe she should build that device, and maybe she will, but right now, she's using the device that she has, her hands. And she's not railing about how her taxes go to pay for the EPA and the Department of Fish and Wildlife and to fund grants for Heal the Bay and how somebody from one of those places should really be here doing something about this. That would make her a little asshole. <laughs> because she's clearly too young to pay taxes. The point is, maybe, some of one, maybe one of those people should be there, but they're not. She is, and she's not waiting for somebody else to act. No, she's not. I mean, you can wait until the perfect moment in time when suddenly you have everything figured out, or, like the little girl, you can dig in with what you've got and just start throwing back some starfish. And in fact, our next guest is doing that in a big, big way. Take a look. My name is Raquel Turner and I am the founder of Mothers Fighting for Others and we run a home in Kenya uh, for girls called St. Monica's Children's Home. My first trip in 2007 to Kenya, I met 25 amazing girls, anywhere between four years old and at that point probably 16. These 25 girls were true orphans because of you know, HIV or if it was because their parents had just died or a political issue that had happened and they had been murdered, they were brought to the home. The biggest thing that hit me was I was never alone. The girls were constantly on me, wanting to hold my hand, hug me, kiss me. They just wanted that closeness, that, that feeling of a touch, and especially from a mom. My goal every time I go is to hug them, to look at them, to really look at them and tell them that I love them. Because the stigma of being an orphan in general is hard enough for them to deal with. You're less than. You, obviously you've lost your parents and you don't have a home and you can tell the kids that are, are the have-nots, you know, the, the shoes that have huge holes in them, the socks that don't fit, the, the, the huge you know, holes in their sweaters, you can tell. The name Mothers Fighting for Others came about because I always figured, what would happen if I died? I mean, I've got six kids. That would be a lot of work for someone to take on. Mothers Fighting for Others is what we think that their mothers would have wanted for them. And we figured, got to have a great education and to make sure that they're loved and that they know that they're loved. The conditions at the home were painful to look at. They were in a, a building that was just an old hospital. No grass, not really cement. It was dirt with a lot of rocks around it. That's what I saw. I was worried. Things weren't wonderful at the old home. You know, the girls um, were not happy there. Not a place to laugh and play and just be kids. Mrs. Gotomi was on the board of directors. When we needed to move, she became my partner. Now we have you know, 33 girls to put through school and 33 girls to take care of. Simple things, like underwear, or just going to school. I mean, simple, simple things.
If you don't get an education and you're a girl, life gets very difficult and you're most likely going to stay at home. And you're most likely going to have lots of children and you're most likely going to have other girls, daughters who don't go to school as well. And so we just know that by giving these girls an opportunity to go to school just to finish high school. And so that changes everybody's lives. Everybody's lives now multiply that by, you know, 34, 44 children. And we've changed a complete community. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rocky Turner. Oh. Hi. I'm really wishing I had that second <laughs> glass of wine next door. <laughs> So it's a lot easier to work for other people than it is to have people talk about you. So thank you for being here for us to be able to highlight all the good work that you do. Um, I really love the name of your organization because it, it's not just a name that sounds good. It describes exactly what you do. I mean, you were fighting for these girls. And we saw how it took two years to move them from the Dreer Hospital that they were in into this wonderful environment that you've now created for them. So could you please share with us a little bit more about how you've been fighting for the girls for the past six and a half years? I mean, it started within the first six months of me getting to know them where we found out that the director, the original director of the home was lying to us about how much things cost. And what we thought was a thousand dollars to send a girl that was really like 200. Mm -hmm. And so he was pocketing the money. And we found, luckily we found out very, very early. And at that point, he never got another penny. And so. Uh, what did you do instead? I had to travel there myself. And how did you travel there? <laughs> uh, I traveled there sometimes alone with lots of cash on my body. There was a trip that I had, I had a money belt on. And I had anywhere, but, well, one trip I had $10,000 strapped to my body. One, I haven't even told you this, I had about $24,000 strapped to my body. And we actually, at that trip, we ended up having to go to an IDP camp. Mm -hmm. And we were there for six hours. And I, it was very difficult for me to have that amount of money for different people while I was there at a refugee camp. And you were taking that money and making sure that it went directly to... Oh, it was, a very, it was difficult because I couldn't give it to him. And at that point, we, sometimes we had four girls going to school. The worst, we had 16 girls going to school. And they were never going to the same school. So I would have to go to a bank, transfer money, then go to the school, pay for the school. And then we would have to buy all of the things for the children, so you have a, you have kids. Mm -hmm. So if you had to send your child off to boarding school for three months, imagine all the things you had to buy mm. for three months. Tell us what some of those things are. Well, they're all girls, so that makes it worse. <laughs> um, so I mean, if we go from head to toe, I mean, you've got you know hair and no makeup, but um, you know toothpaste, toothbrush, bras, underwear. These uniforms. are for the girls that are going to high school. Yes. <laughs> so actually, maybe we should explain that. Um, Education in Nairobi is free from kindergarten to eighth grade, but that term free is a little bit misleading. Can you tell us why? Well, it's, it's free if you can purchase a uniform, if you can buy pencils and a bag, you have to get your books. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, if you're making one to two dollars a day, but you have to spend an American dollars, a hundred dollars, that's really, really tough. And if, if, I mean, if you have one child versus you know, four, right. you're most likely going to pick the boys to go to school right. and not the girls. Um, and so what is high school like then? Or not high school, eighth, ninth grade on, so that they understand um, the boarding school aspect of it. Well, um, for us, um, the girls go off, and they're gone for three months. And it's, it's year-round, so they come home every three months. 
and that's when we get to go visit them, is during those months off. Um, but for us, our um, sponsorship is about $1,500, and that's for the entire year. And that will take care of um, their tuition to go to school, um, any kind of extra, they call it tuition, it's, it's um, the supplementary mm -hmm. um, things that we can do for them if they're not doing well in math. Um, from book bags to their books, to, I mean everything that you, we all go to Walmart to get for our <laughs> own kids, You're there. that's what they need. And you partnered with Mrs. Gatomi, mm -hmm. um, and she's been a wonderful partner. Can you tell us why she's been such a wonderful partner for you? Well the first, the first time we met, we just clicked. And we met um, by happenstance, actually it was kind of a secret. Um, See, tell me this. Stories you don't know. <laughs> and uh, because the director didn't want us to meet. Mm. And I think now I understand why he didn't want us to meet. And when we met, we clicked instantaneously. And I found out she was a mother of seven. Mm. And we just sort of talked about what our dream and hope was for the girls. And after an hour and a half conversation, we knew that both our vision and what we wanted and the values that we had to you know to where we wanted the girls to be and what kind of women we wanted them to be they just clicked and we haven't stopped and mrs gatomi also know what, knows from first hand experience what it's like to fight for her own <laughs> education could you please share that story with well she first of all she's got i don't know like i can't keep count like 14 15 brothers and sisters and so she was one of the um, she's one of the older ones but even her younger brothers got to go to school mm -hmm. and she wasn't allowed to and so she would actually sneak into her brother's homework and do the homework for them and the principal found out and asked to see her and she thought she was in trouble and the principal ended up sponsoring her and she got to go to school. Uh, it was really cool. Um, so, so she knows more than anybody. I mean, she, <laughs> she's, she's it. Um, also, for everyone here to know, Mothers Fighting for Others is a 100% volunteer organization. Mm -hmm. All the money raised goes straight to the girls. You've already told us a little bit about what that is like, um, but people do go and volunteer there and spend their time. Can you tell us what that part of it is like? Well, you've got to pay for your own ticket, mm -hmm. since it's all volunteer. Um, and they go for a week, two weeks? It matters what you can do. I mean, we are a, well, you want to go when the children are there. So normally we go in April, August, um, or December. Those are the times that we get to go because we want to spend the most time, you know, we can with them, and we just kind of hang out. I mean, we, it really comes down. I mean, now we get to just hang out. You we say now play. there's pictures of people painting. Yeah, that, people <laughs> when we first lived in the home, I mean, I feel really bad. We've got, um, you know, two board members, Jen and Ashley, who were there uh, when we, the second trip that we had to, you know, do that to the house, and uh, I mean, they retiled bathrooms and I mean it was we had some we had a lot of work to do mm -hmm. I mean even though it's a it's a night it's a house they, they went from a from a old hospital setting to an actual house it was just really it, it was it was really bad. <laughs> it was really bad I mean, you wouldn't want to pee in that bathroom <laughs> <laughs> so um one of the other things I wanted to, that you mentioned in the video, obviously, is how an education can change the life of a girl and change the whole community as a result. Mm -hmm. But the community at St. Monica's Children's Home in Nairobi has been very supportive of you guys. Absolutely. Um, because now uh, the home, you've grown to how many girls? We have 44 children. We do have, we do have um, three boys. Three boys. And so now you're kind of busting at the seams. So what did the community do for you guys? Well, we knew that this house wasn't going to be able to hold us. I mean, first of all, it's we're renting it. Mm. And the landlord is, you know, every month he's like, when are you gonna leave, when are you gonna leave? And so Mrs. Gatomi took it upon herself to purchase 20 acres of land. I mean, she, out of, the, out of her own bank account and wow. took her own loan out and that kind of, I mean, she's dedicated, and her whole family's dedicated to it. And uh, she's put on her own, her own fundraisers there. Mm. I mean, the Kenyan community um, have helped literally raise the building. Mm. So we're on the second floor of the building now. Um, but that's just that portion of it. I mean, you know, we have times when even though we do send money, it's just simply not enough. And so the community comes around and, you know, you got 90 kilos of rice and now we've, we can feed the girls for, you know, a month or two. Mm. I mean, it's, it's big from, from clothes to food. But the coolest thing about Mrs. Gatomi is if you can't, if you can't give something, then spend time because a, not a lot of visitors might come you know family members might not be able to come and just speak to the girls you know be be advocates for them um, especially young 
educated women are always welcome to the house because they're role models for our girls. So it's really cool. Well, Rocky, it's been such a pleasure getting to know you and meeting you, and we wish you and the girls many, many more victories on your journey. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for Rocky Turner. <laughs> We're still doing a show here.